What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel and today we have a 2005 Toyota Tacoma X-Runner. It's got the 4 liter, got the 6 speed in it. I think it's like the RA6. I can't remember if it's the F or not, but I'm going to be doing a clutch on this. And I'm bringing that one here because we have to take some stuff out in here. Some of the center console stuff to get the shifter knob out. So first thing I'm going to do is pull this cup holder out. If you grab right there, lift, should come right out. Then inside of here, press this button, it opens. For anybody who doesn't know, there's a little net on this one. See if I can get this carpet out. There it is, a little plastic piece. Uh, right there, a little backing. That's it. And then let me get my light on my phone. there we go so there are two 10 millimeters right there then you're going to have one right there and one right there once you do that you can lift up on this and then i think you need to pull some pieces out down on the front hold on let me check i haven't looked yet uh, never changed the clutch in this model before so it's gonna be a learning curve for both of us so but I do know we need to do that 10 this 10 and those two so let me get those and then we'll see what we need to take off to get the rest of the shifter out and I'll be right back so when we pull the two out of the center console there's two like either Phillips heads or eight millimeters little black ones right here. You can take those off and the whole back piece will slide off. I got it right here. Uh, let me find those. This is what they look like. They go in to those two spots right there. You can take those and then whenever you take these two that were inside where the cup holder was, you just take the shifter knob, which is right here, just unscrews, just regular threaded screw. You take that off and then you pull back and the whole center piece right here where the shifter is I know it's a little dark right there will all come out in, in one piece and now all we have to do is take the shifter itself out and shifter is a little loose anyway we're doing a shifter bushing while we're in here but we're gonna have some 10 millimeters it looks like right there and it's missing two of them actually on the front or somebody like somebody put quick connects in there or if it had quick connects they're old yeah I think they might just have been quick connects I don't know like I said I've never taken one of these out so we'll have to see if they're threaded or not but there's at least two tens right here and I don't know how tight they are not tight at all I got a feeling somebody's had this out before ahead and take it off while I have y'all right here so y'all can kind of see this I know sometimes I don't show a lot of stuff just because I don't want the videos to be you know four or five hours long and I just want to kind of get to the point and let y'all see and let y'all know exactly what comes out and off from these come on what is it hanging up on? I can't see underneath here. Oh, oh, there's just that right there. It's just a little tight, but that comes up. And it looks like... I'm going to get one of these screws and see if they thread in. No, they don't thread in, so it must be just little push connectors on the front. May see about getting new ones of those because they are pretty wore out so now we have the boot and the surrounding off I'm trying to pull up my flashlight as you can see maybe too bright for you but some bolts right there they look like probably 12s so we're gonna pull that off and then we can pull the shifter out 
So I uh, read that wrong. You don't have to pull this whole little centerpiece out. I'll put the bolts back in because that's not needed. And they were 12s just in case you were wondering. But we have the shifter right here. And what you do is you actually pull up on this rubber piece. And then there's this little cap. You push in and rotate it counterclockwise. And there's like a little uh, pin down in there. And that's what this latches into. You can pull the little shifter out. There is your bushing right there. We're going to replace that because it does have a good bit of slop in the shifter. So I'm going to set this down where it can't get anything dirty. So I'm going to set it down outside for the time being. There's the shifter hole, and you can see the pins right there where it locks onto. So I'm going to throw these little 12 millimeters back in, and then we're going to raise the truck up and start pulling everything out from underneath. So where I want to start is pulling drive shaft out. So you got two bolts right here, one on each side. They look like about a 14 or 15. And then there should be four on the differential as well. It should be like 14s and 15s. But they're nuts and bolts on these. So give you a shot of them. Nuts on the, uh, this side, bolts on that side. Once you drop all that, you can pull the drive shaft out in one unit. Then after we do that, I'm going to drain the fluid, which is right here, just because I don't want any fluid to come out. We're going to go ahead and do a fluid change in this. Then after that, we got a couple connectors. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect those two sensors. You shouldn't have to, but I'm just going to do it just as a safety precaution in case they get hung up on something. And I'd rather them not get torn off. I don't feel like doing any wiring today. I think that is like a 22 or 24 on that. I think it's the same size as the differentials if I'm remembering correctly. And then after we do that, disconnect the slave cylinder. You had a couple connectors. We'll go ahead and disconnect these connectors if we can. Uh, where are you? Come on over there. There we go. There's that one. I'll make sure I'm showing y'all correctly. It's got a little tab right there. And then my fingers are dirty. Uh, go ahead and pull this O2 sensor. Yeah, snap and pull. Same thing with this one. Snap, pull. And I know it's connected onto the transmission if I can get it push out. There we go. And then you got bell housing bolts all around and you got a exhaust can uh support on this side and this side your cross member is right here you do have these supports that attach to it uh if you're rusted real bad um you're probably gonna break these bolts off i've done it before and most of the time the customers just tell me just leave them off it ain't a big deal but if we can get them out we try to get them out I'm trying to think there was a speed sensor back here. Oh, there it is. I can get it off. Oh, there we go. That's where your shifter is, right on that side. So, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and start pulling this drive shaft out. Once I get it out, I'll come back and I'll show you draining the transmission. And then we will start with pulling this cross member so we can get the jack underneath here and supported and all that stuff after we drain the fluid. We got the fluid draining now. Uh, it was a 27 that held that in. I can't remember which size it was, but we do have all the bolts pretty much almost out. These are loose. I just gotta, the back ones are out. I just gotta take these loose, pop that back out real quick, and then we can pull the drive shaft. But I wanted to drain it first just to keep fluid from running out of the tail shaft. And while we're in here, it looks like there's a little bit of a oil leak up there. Might be a rear main. We'll see. If it is, we'll go ahead and change it while we're in there. Um, to be honest, we might change it anyway. It's just good practice to do that whenever you're taking, tra excuse me, a transmission out of uh, anything. So let me pull this drive shaft. Now that you know that it is a 27, you can pull that out uh, when it stops. When it comes to just kind of like a dribble on here, I'll put the plug back in. And then uh, I'll bring y'all back and we'll start pulling the exhaust uh, supports off on this. And then we will 
probably get the transmission jack under it start pulling the uh, cross member out so I can lower it down so I can tilt the engine so I can get to the top of the bell housing bolts and then I can actually start taking the um, slave cylinder out as well get the drive shaft out took the four transmission mounting bolts out went ahead and took one bolt out on the cross member on each side the nuts are off of the bolts on the other two uh, I just have this little one right here uh, this nut right here on there just because it is hitting the exhaust hanger but once we pull the bolt back uh, we should be able to take it off no problem took the exhaust bolt supports off those actually come out extremely easy but i did put some uh croil on there uh, they're not a sponsor or anything but i do love their product it works extremely well in my opinion uh, some of y'all might like wd bolt buster uh pb blaster whatever just put some penetrating oil on those and make it a lot easier make sure you do the front and the back but um oh i want to show y'all i don't know how well y'all can see this the camera is acting up but i did color the differential and the drive shaft with some orange paint marker didn't show up too well on the differential but i can see it i did co color that because i want to put it back in the same spot just to eliminate any vibration if there happened to be any but we're going to pull the slave cylinder off next i'm going to pull this cover right here off and then there should be i think i think there's a bolt in here if i remember correctly on the bottom and the top it may just be the bottom but uh, i'm going to pull that off of the transmission and pull it out of the way there is a bracket that holds the other like portion and valve section of it right there one on the bottom and it must just be that one on the bottom i thought there was two of them but there's just one on the bottom for that pull this cover and then there's one on the bottom for the actual slave cylinder and it should come right out got the battery disconnected now got the cross member out went ahead and took the exhaust supports on the side of the bell housing off as well and then over here is our slave cylinder went ahead and took it completely off and i disconnected the actual, the actual cylinder from the proportional valve portion of it it is a 10 millimeter and then you got two tens right here and the cover is held on with three 12 millimeters and then i took the line off Let's see if i can show it to you this little valve i took the line off right here and it was dark to it as well that way i can hardly get up in here with the brackets in a way i probably get in there now and take this upper bolt off to this valve but i'm just going to leave it on because i want to uh, flush the system anyway and re-bleed it but we got it off and once you take these two tins off it just slides right out now next thing i'm going to do is go ahead and start pulling the rest of the bell housing bolts off these right here are 14s then the bigger ones those are going to be 17s so that's all i really have left to do is to pull those and then i can slide the transmission back and we should be able to get in there and look at the clutch and the flywheel and make sure that we don't have to turn the flywheel and we'll see how all that looks and then see if the actual rear main is leaking as well so here are all the bell housing bolts and I'll show you this is the order in which they came out. So it's a 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17. So you should, should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 17s, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 14s. And these two right here, I believe, go into the starter. But we got them all out. We got everything off. Um, I also went ahead and took the exhaust down pipes off where the caps and everything are and I did that just so the engine could lower down a little bit more because on the driver's side it was hitting right here and you can see we got the transmission pretty loose all we really have to do is just pull it back I'll see if I can set y'all up and let y'all kind of watch this we'll see if we can get this pull back I feel like it's 
catching on something over here. Oh, there it goes. Oh, I don't know how forward heavy this thing is. Adjust my pieces. Okay. I'm kind of in front of y'all for a second. so we don't catch it on anything as well. Here is the inside of the bell housing and it looks like there's some oil up in here. Don't know if that's from a rear main which it looks like it is leaking. It looks like it's coming down. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this off. Get y'all out of the way. So here's the clutch. You can see there's some debris. There's some wear marks on the pressure plate from the throw out bearing on the little fingers. Should have one, two, three, four, five, looks like six, 12 millimeters. Pull that off, then the clutch and pressure plate should come out together. The throw out bearing is right here. I'm going to pour the fork and everything out with it together. So I'll pull the fork and the throwout bearing out together and then we'll pull the clutch and pressure plate off and then we'll see what the flywheel looks like. So we washed the inside of this out and you can see there's still some residual down inside there. It's just hard to get out from inside that. But we did wash it out with some brake cleaner and she looks a lot better. We even sprayed the engine back here down and she looks a lot better, but we still have to pop this rear main seal out. You can see where it's still down here on the bottom. But we're going to pull that out. I'm going to use like the little uh, screw trick with uh, screw it into it and pull it out with a screwdriver. And then we'll tap the new one back in place. But I'm going to put the throwout bearing in here. The old one is right down here. And I don't know if y'all can hear that. But this sucker is wore out. Here is the flywheel. I don't feel any pits or anything in it. Uh, I've went over it a few times. I'm going to take some Scotch Brite, uh, like hand Scotch Brite, go over this and see if I can get some of that coloration off, and then we'll clean that up. Here is the clutch and pressure plate. You can see it was getting pretty close to the rivets on certain spots. And you can hear it rattling around pretty good. It shouldn't be making that much noise. But here is the pressure plate. The fingers are what really have some uh, wear on them. I mean they got some deep grooves in them. But 
I'm going to show you the new stuff. We did get Toyota original parts. We're waiting on the rear main seal to come in. Here is the pressure plate right there. Part number is 31210-60280. The clutch assembly is right here, 31250-35452. And then the throw out bearing is right here. 31230 60241. Let's check that out. Come on. I'm going to one handed. Caught on the bag. Go. Shouldn't spin, but like just a little bit. But no noise. I'm going to throw this back in. Let's see if you can see these ears right there, the little contact points. Sorry, don't throw it around in the bell housing like I'm doing. But got these latches it just latches in like that uh, it's gonna be kind of hard for me to show you one-handed but it's gonna snap in you just gonna pull this out as far as you can and you can pull it off of here if you'd like to uh, but I did get mine out without doing it so I can put it back in without doing it as well so let me put this on real quick and then I'll show it to you got it on uh, I did just pull this out and put it on. It was just easier to pull off. All you do is you get your fingers behind it and you can pry right here and it should pull right back. Put a little bit of grease around the shafts just so it wouldn't bind up and you can see it moving really free now. And then your, um, God, I can think of it, slave cylinder goes in right here and that's what pushes and pulls that back and forth. So now we're just waiting on the rear main seal. Like I said, I do have to clean some of these threads out, get all this old Loctite off. And, but I did clean that off a little bit. So before I pull this out, I'm gonna let the seal come in. And then once it comes in, we will uh, put this back together. It is the next day and we already have the new seal in. I didn't show me taking it out or anything just because this is more of a clutch job. I was going to show it, but it didn't come in until really late last night. But here's the part number for the rear main seal, BS40686. It has a Felpro. I just used a screwdriver and it pried right out, no issues. And on the new one, we put a little bit of oil on the inside lip. And then as I put it in, I kind of twisted it like that and it slid in as far as it could. Then I just used uh, a little bit of a bigger socket and just tapped it around the edge until it flushed out. Once we did that, I went ahead and put the flywheel on also. I'll show it to you. It's right there and it cleaned up really well. I'm happy with that. Uh, you can see a little bit of discoloration, but nothing major. But the bolts, they torque to 22 foot pounds and an additional 90 degrees. So I put some little paint lines on there. They're about wiped off now because of my greasy fingers. But um, they about wiped off. Uh, I know you can kind of see them right there. So I knew when they reached the 90 and I just put a ratchet and a big bar on it just to keep it from rotating the engine. Uh, so you don't have a lot of room to put like a screwdriver or pry bar up in here against the teeth on the flywheel. So, um, plus that way, and it ain't going to hurt the crank bolt or anything on that either, just because it's such a lower torque and that crank bolt torques to way more than what these do. But now what we got to do is we're going to put the clutch and the pressure plate on here, and we're going to try out this universal alignment tool, see how well we like it, and see how good of a job it does. But let me get this up in place and everything started and then once uh, I get ready to torque it down I'll bring y'all back and we will torque everything down. So we got it started on there. These bolts are just hand tight as you can see I can turn them. They're not super tight it's just enough to start them and I just wanted to make sure it was up there so that the clutch can move around and here's the tool we have. Put that 
There's a piece that goes inside of the crankshaft that's the same size as the in di inside diameter. And then it has like this little uh, piece right here. And you just push it up on there as tight as you can. And it should center it up. You can see it, it's got a little bit of play in there, but not a lot. So while I got this up in here, what I'm going to do is start tightening up these bolts. And these bolts right here only torque to 14 foot-pounds, which is not a lot. I was really surprised that they only torqued to that. So, but we're going to go ahead and tighten them down while I have this tool in there. If you get like an aftermarket kit, most of the times they do come with a lineup tool. But this one was from Toyota and it does not come with a lineup tool. So I rented this one right here. And here's the kit. I got it from, I think, Advance. They're not a sponsor. But that's the part number. Uh, 648-649. So let me get this up in here and get it torqued down. And then that way we can go ahead and start putting the transmission back up inside of the engine bay or transmission tunnel. We are in the truck right now and we are test driving it. Everything is going good. We're running about 50. We're in, uh, it's like fourth gear right now. We're only turning like 2,500 RPM, so there's no need to shift into fifth just yet. But uh, I've been driving it now for probably, I don't know, five, ten minutes. Everything seems good. Clutch pedal feels good. I'm trying to film this one-handed. So, you know, see it jerking around a little bit. Just sorry about that. It's all I can say at this point. But we did get everything back in there. Uh, ended up bleeding the clutch for probably about 15 minutes before we got everything in like in down to the slave cylinder but everything feels good on it now the fluid to come out of it was extremely dirty so it really needed to uh, be bled and right all that to have a, a flush done to it so I ran about a full bottle of brake fluid through it and all the fluid come out good and clean now. What you doing? Sorry, the car in front of me is acting weird. But it's driving good. All, everything went back in good except for two things. I will say uh, one of the exhaust bolts broke while putting it in. I don't know if it like galled up a thread when it come out what happened on that because one of them on the uh, exhaust manifold is the one that broke so I had to drill it out fun fun and then the one that uh, actually has the spring on it that, that goes from the catalytic converter Y-pipe to the muffler one of those was stripped out too so I ended up having to drill it out and I got a long enough bolt to where I put a washer and put the spring on it through uh, still had the spring so it would keep tension on there and they put those on there to kind of help with movement but other than that everything on there went great uh, it took two quarts of GL57590 gear oil that's what it recommends uh, mine took a little bit more than two quarts so I went ahead and bought a gallon just to be safe let me set y'all down for one second because I'm coming to a stop sign and we'll have to shift gears again 